Atisha Bader, and in the news, the recent announcement by ice cream giant Ben and Jerry's to not sell its product in what it calls the occupied Palestinian territory, presumably meaning the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Condemnation of the decision, which is seen by many as a capitulation to the BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel, has been heard from the Israeli government as well as from leading mainstream Jewish organizations, including the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, with a very strong statement in response to the Ben and Jerry's announcement. The conference is the central coordinating body for American Jewry, representing 53 national Jewish agencies from across the political and religious spectrum. CEO of the Conference of Presidents, William Daroff, is kind enough to join us on JBS from New York. William, thank you so very much for taking the time. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much, and hello to my JBS fans and family. Thank you so much. So, William, on the surface, the general public may look at this news item and say, what's the big deal? So you won't be able to buy Ben and Jerry's in a settlement in the West Bank. Tell us why it is, in fact, a really big deal. Well, it really is a uh, discriminatory act that Ben and Jerry's is taking uh, in boycotting uh, Israel and boycotting uh, the uh, Israel and not allowing their product to be sold there. Uh, boycotts are uh, something that we as a Jewish people have experienced for uh, generations and something that uh, is uh, a hateful act. Uh, this was promulgated by the BDS movement, uh, which is a movement that seeks to uh, really uh, eliminate uh, the state of Israel, if you look at the, the verbiage of the founders of the BDS movement. Uh, and in fact, uh, the decision that was made, which was, as you said, uh, describing the occupied Palestinian territory as one that's now been criticized. Uh, by those same BDS activists for Ben and Jerry's not going far enough by not boycotting uh, all of Israel, which demonstrates that uh, some of those who push these boycotts are not guided by concern over disputed territory, but rather they're seeking any excuse uh, to demonize the state of Israel. So we are uh, very concerned about this, very concerned uh, that Ben and Jerry's is involved in this uh, hateful uh, boycott uh, action, uh, and we are looking to uh, push back on it in a number of different ways. So what are some of the ways that you are that you have plans on at the moment, if you can go into that? For sure. So uh, individuals are taking individual action uh, and uh, and not buying Ben & Jerry's anymore and telling their, their grocers and their kosher uh, uh, grocery stores and other stores that uh, they no longer want to buy uh, Ben & Jerry's. And I think that individual action uh, is important, that people uh, are, uh, are walking away uh, with, uh, with their wallets full and telling Ben & Jerry's that this is uh, not acceptable behavior. Uh, but beyond that, 33 states have taken action over the last few years through legislation and executive orders to penalize companies that boycott Israel. Uh, and this is uh, action that will make it more difficult for uh, states to purchase goods uh, from a company that boycotts Israel uh, and also for pension funds to invest uh, in companies that boycott Israel. Ben & Jerry's is a wholly owned subsidiary of Unilever, uh, which is the billion, uh, multi-billion dollar uh, international consumer products company. Uh, and it is Unilever here that is responsible for the action, uh, and Unilever that uh, should, we believe, uh, rescind this decision uh, and, and reverse it and allow for Ben & Jerry's to be, uh, continue to be sold in Israel as it has been sold for, for over 20 years. What do you say to someone who says, well, it's still going to be sold in Israel, it's just not going to be sold in the settlements? What is your response to that? Well, the fact is that uh, they don't talk about the settlements, they talk about occupied Palestinian territory, but what they're actually doing, despite what the statement says, uh, they are rescinding their contract with Ben & Jerry's Israel, which is the only entity that sells Ben & Jerry's in Israel. Uh, and so they're canceling that contract, and so uh, they're canceling that contract because Ben & Jerry's Israel refuses to boycott uh, parts of Israel. So it's really a, 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 double, uh, a double deal here where it's a secondary boycott that they are uh, running against. So it is, uh, in fact, boycotting all of Israel because their contracting uh, with Ben & Jerry's Israel will be canceled. Uh, but beyond that, many of the states that have this legislation talk about uh, any uh, boycott at all of the state of Israel or any uh, territory that Israel controls as being off limits. So uh, that fact doesn't really matter here, uh, no matter which direction you look at it from. 
That's a really important point. And I want to just mention that Ben & Jerry's Israel, uh, the CEO, I believe, Avi Zinger, is telling people, don't boycott us in Israel because you know, we are, this is our business. And in fact, Ayelet Shaked, who's the interior minister, visited the Ben & Jerry's factory, I think, last week and, you know, stressed to people by Ben & Jerry's Israel. And I think the boycotts or the, the actions that are being taken are really focusing on actions in the United States as far as not buying Ben & Jerry's here in the U.S., yeah, that's correct. The Ben and Jerry's Israel, uh, the fellow you mentioned, has been there for 30 years, uh, and he is uh, seems to be a great Zionist, and he's the one who is pushing back against uh, the Ben and Jerry's International, the Unilever International decision uh, to rescind this contract uh, to him, the franchise agreement that he has. So uh, absolutely, I think people in Israel should continue to eat uh, Ben and Jerry's, uh, and I think individuals can take uh, whatever action uh, they wish as far as their their conscience goes. I think it'll be a while. Uh, before I have Cherry Garcia again. Um, but I am hopeful that Unilever here will change directions as they see um, that, uh, the, that really the, uh, I think the proper turn is the balagon uh, that will be created by, uh, by this boycott action uh, with states that will be forced to take action against them and with individuals taking action by no longer uh, buying Ben & Jerry's. Right. And I want to get back to the press release that the conference put out because it really was very thoughtful and very specific and and really covered so many points that, again, this seemingly not a big deal news story shows what a huge deal it is. Um, if I can just mention one section of the statement, you say you're urging Unilever to recognize that boycotts of Israel are discriminatory, as you mentioned, and further inflame the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They do not move the chances for peace forward. Can you just expound on that a bit? to people who might not be seeing that side of what it actually means on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. It's in a number of different directions. Uh, one is that there are uh, many Palestinians, Israeli Arabs, uh, who work in, uh, work in Israel and work in Israeli plants. And we know from uh, the actions of uh, that boycotted SodaStream a few years ago, where SodaStream ended up having to move their plant because of it, uh, it was a situation where uh, literally hundreds of Palestinian employees lost their jobs because of the BDS movement. Um, so the one of the uh, key factors here is that it's Palestinians who uh, are often harmed by these boycott moves and by those who uh, threaten economic action. Beyond that, the sort of larger issue is that one way to bring about peace is for uh, Jewish Israelis uh, and Arab Israelis and Arabs uh, to get to know each other, to have people-to-people -people exchanges, to work together, to know each other, to see each other. Uh, and what boycotts do is rather than encourage these people-to-people -people experiences and engagements that bring us together as a people, what boycotts do is they literally um, separate us. They put us on different sides uh, of, uh, of an argument. They put us on, on different sides and separate us from each other in a way that rather than creating an environment that's conducive to peace actually uh, creates an environment that hardens uh, the friction that already occurs and is out there. Such a good point. And you mentioned SodaStream, which, which again, was a, a company which still exists. They moved their factory. Uh, their factory used to be uh, over the green line, as we say, and was an incredible place for Palestinians, Arabs, J Israeli Jews, Israeli Arabs, working together side by side, as you said, forging relationships, seeing each other, which is such an important step to reaching peace. And that all fell apart because of the boycott and then needing to shut down that factory. No one talks about, no one, none of the, none, no BDS supporter ever talks about or acknowledges the repercussions of, of their actions negatively for any peaceful ne uh, negotiations or result between Israel, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Well, and I, and I think that speaks uh, very well to the actual intentions of the BDS movement. We know, as I mentioned, that the founders of the BDS movement uh, are on record talking about uh, eliminating uh, Israel as a Jewish state, about eliminating Israel's existence at all, of, of having a one-state solution, uh, which in effect would be uh, the, the end of Israel as we know it. Um, so uh, the BDS movement itself is one that uh, is definitely uh, looking to destroy Israel, and actions like this, which may come from better intentions, uh, no doubt lead down that same path. And that's why we must stand up loudly and clearly and speak out and say, absolutely not, this is not acceptable. Uh, we will not 
uh, just lay by silently and allow you to uh, boycott the one and only state of Israel. Uh, also worth noting, by the way, that Ben & Jerry's does business in all sorts of countries around the world uh, that have questionable records. Uh, one, uh, uh, for instance, is that when Ben & Jerry's talks about their um, social justice policies, they talk about LGBT issues as being one of the top uh, three issues that they focus on. Yet, Ben & Jerry's does business in Singapore, uh, which is a country that is, uh, if you Google it, you'll see, uh, has a record as it relates to LGBT issues that is um, very much at the bottom uh, end of how countries deal with it and rights are heavily restricted there. So why doesn't Ben & Jerry's engage uh, with issues with Singapore? Why don't they engage with issues uh, here in the United States where there are social justice issues that violate um, their uh, where they stand? Uh, and the bottom line is because it's not Israel, it's not the Jewish state, and that's why we see uh, these boycott efforts as being discriminatory uh, and part of a, a larger um, uh, cancer uh, that we must do all we can to remove and move forward from. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up, William, because I, I did, you know, I, I tried to dig and I tried to ask, I asked Ben and Jerry's, I asked Unilever about that question. Is there any other part of the world where such a boycott as this, where such a decision has been made? I never got an answer, but thank you for bringing up Singapore as an example. As we know, Israel is, is a, a leading example of LGBTQ rights. Um, with some of the largest gay pride parades um, in this in that part of the world and um, other rights that exist. Such an important point to make um, that, again, if this is the only time Ben & Jerry's has made such a decision, it certainly is singling out Israel. It certainly seems to be in line with BDS. I The closest example I could find was in Australia back in, I think, 2018. They... Um, in Australia, they said not to serve the same kind of scoops of ice cream together, like no two same scoops, because they wanted to make a statement about Australia's um, marriage equality laws that were not what Ben & Jerry's thought they should be. So that's the closest I have ever seen to Ben & Jerry's. You know, they, they've taken political stands in the past. They they create flavors, as you mentioned, for various um, issues like social justice and racial equality. But I've never seen a boycott before um, in any other part of the world. So that is a huge, huge point. And um, I did want to ask you about this one group that seems to be behind the push, maybe the pressure that's been put on Ben and Jerry's, apparently for a couple of years. And I don't know if that's where the blame lies or what exactly, you know, what what shifted? I'm guessing the conflict with Hamas and Israel in May was perhaps... Um, something that moved this agenda along. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that, but there is this group called Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. And I was wondering um, if we could talk a little bit about the influence of them and other groups so, like, yeah, these, like them. These groups clearly are part of uh, the BDS movement. They are associated with the BDS movement, uh, which, as I mentioned, is one that uh, is, is founded by individuals who certainly have uh, nefarious goals as it relates to uh, to the state of Israel. Uh, and one that uh, where they're what they're protesting is uh, is really just a uh, a fig leaf uh, for their desire for there to be an end of a state of Israel. Uh, as relates to the conflict uh, of uh, a couple months ago of uh, of June, uh, I think that it's it's really interesting to see that where um, Hamas was uh, targeting uh, Israeli civilian populations, uh, this was a a conflict that Israel did not ask for. It's a conflict that Israel. Uh, was not interested in, and it's one that uh, was one that was purely of self-defense. Uh, and to see that these same uh, groups having zero recognition of Israel's right to defend herself, of uh, of the right of uh, of individual Israelis not to have to uh, live in bomb shelters and and be running literally running for their lives, um, seems like it uh, it really speaks to the the bias uh, uh, of these organizations who uh, really are not able to. Uh, uh, get past their uh, venomous hatred of Israel uh, to think about the individual Israeli uh, boys and girls and others who are being threatened on a on a on a daily basis during that 11-day conflict, and for the people uh, who live uh, in Starot and along uh, the Gaza border uh, who have that threat every day uh, of uh, of Iranian of uh, Iranian-backed uh, Hamas uh, rocket fire. Yeah, I want to just mention one thing because I did go on to the. Vermonters for Justice in Palestine website. And 
was kind of astounded by several things they say, one being that uh, they, they had been calling on Ben and Jerry's. They issued a press release in June, um, as you mentioned, when just after the conflict, to end their complicity, quote unquote, in Israel's Jewish only settlements regime, calling the settlements segregated settlements built on stolen Palestinian land. Now, I know I was fairly certain that there is nothing in any Jewish settlements uh, guidelines to restrict who lives there, to restrict that only Jews can live in the settlements. But I, I did my, my research and I reached out to the head of the Yesha Council. His name is Igal Dilmoni. The head of Yesha is the Yudan Shimron, Judea Samaria, the West Bank. And he got back to me and absolutely said that there is no such stipulation. Anyone can live in the settlements. And in fact, he said in Ariel, for example, which is one of the largest Jewish settlements that's considered really a city, there are Christians, there are Druze, so many non-Jews living in the settlement. So just it is a blatant lie to call the settlement segregated. And it also tries to co-opt, which we're seeing all the time, this issue with racism in America and other such issues that really are not relevant and are, have no connection to what's happening um, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Yeah, well, I think that uh, yeah, the terminology that uh, Unilever used, that Ben and Jerry's used, occupied Palestinian territory, was the, the, term, the term of art they used, but it's a term of art that really has no meaning. Uh, we don't really know what that means. You know, is Ramallah occupied Palestinian territory? Is East Jerusalem occupied Palestinian territory? Uh, in their view, is the is the Holy Basin, is the Kotel, the Western Wall occupied Palestinian territory? Uh, I think it really speaks to the uh, the fact that the the grown ups here uh, in the corporate boardroom weren't engaged in these uh, in the decision making and the discussions, uh, and so that's who we are seeking right now to get the attention of to show them that. Uh, this clearly was not well thought out. Uh, they can easily uh, rescind these decisions. Uh, we know that Unilever can do that by just increasing, according to the terms of their uh, purchase agreement uh, of Ben & Jerry's some 20 years ago, uh, where they're required to follow the recommendations of this Ben & Jerry's Social Justice Board. If they don't follow that, um, that uh, those recommendations, uh, all they have to do is pay a higher licensing fee to Ben & Jerry's uh, to pay 3% more. So this is an issue that Unilever can figure out however they want to do, but their hands really are not tied. The contract talks about a way for them to get out of this. Pay 3% more of a licensing fee. You can rescind the decision. You can take over the company that you bought uh, and not allow it to be really hijacked by these uh, extremists like the ones uh, who, are, uh, who are pushing forth the, uh, the venomous hate uh, like that that you mentioned that we've seen uh, in the newspaper from the, the chairman of this uh, Ben & Jerry's Social Responsibility Board, who really seems like uh, she is an apologist for Hamas. Uh, Unilever can do the right thing very easily. Uh, many of us have Unilever products uh, in our homes uh, as we speak. They're the largest manufacturer of soap in the world. Uh, Google it, look on Wikipedia, you can see the list, you can see how important they are. Uh, but I really believe that once the Unilever execs see that this is a, a direction that is a dead end for them, um, this uh, this uh, mini controversy uh, will be over. At least that is my hope and my desire. Well, and I'm glad you're you're making a bit of a distinction that because many people seem to be asking, where is this coming from? Is this Ben and Jerry's? Is it Unilever? And um, I believe that um, Prime Minister Bennett, Naftali Bennett, spoke with the head of Unilever, and he said, "No, we're committed to continuing to do business in Israel." Sort of trying to distance himself a bit from apparently, as you mentioned, the Ben and Jerry's board which seemed to be up in arms with the statement that was posted from Ben and Jerry's, which ended saying, we are committed to remaining in Israel. Apparently, the board did not want that sentence in the statement. So as you mentioned, that, that shows where their, their hearts really are at. And, and at the end of the day, Ben and Jerry's is a wholly owned subsidiary of Unilever. Um, so there really is not any sort of legal separation between them. Unilever has the ability here, we believe, uh, to uh, reel this back in. Uh, whether or not they were fully engaged in the decision making, whether uh, you know, they, uh, you know, as the Ben and Jerry's socially responsible board says, that this is a you know, Unilever uh, not going for, for as far as they wanted it to go. Uh, regardless of that, as I said, this is something that the Unilever can reel in uh, and make go away. And I'm sure that uh, you know, we'd love to have uh, Cherry Garcia again and 
uh, and enjoy uh, enjoy their ice cream, which uh, they could do by just snapping their fingers. Okay, so you're saying it's really a matter of them paying this 3% more and they could have more control over what uh, decisions they make with Ben and Jerry's. And so that's, I assume... That's, that's, our, that's our understanding of the mm-hmm. uh, purchase agreement that Unilever made with Ben and Jerry's about 20 years ago, that this socially responsible... Uh, they're able to do whatever they want to do socially responsibly. Um, that Unilever can't interfere with that. But if they do, they need to increase the amount, uh, the, the licensing fee by 3% that they pay. Um, so that may be a lot of money. I, I presume it's a lot of money, but it is, uh, uh, you know, free Unilever from being held hostage uh, by these uh, radical extremists. Well, we will certainly follow this story, and I, I welcome you to come back on JBS and tell us of any progress, hopefully, that you're making, um, whether it's in, in contact with Unilever or in other ways to let us know how this is proceeding. Um, as you mentioned, the license expires at the end of next year, so there is some time to try and make a change and have Unilever do the right thing. William Daroff is CEO of the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. We thank him so much for taking the time to join us today on JBS. Thank you, William. Thank you again. My pleasure. And thanks, as always, to our director, Sloan Copeland, managing director, Dara Golub, technical manager, Michael Paley, transmissions manager, John McDevitt, and our producer, Carol Lilienthal. I'm Tisha Bader. Thank you for watching In the News.